Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about one end-to-end -end case study for inbound marketing implementation. And we are going to learn step-by-step -step approach. And at the end of this case study, we are also going to learn the survey questionnaire. If you have to assess the maturity of any organization from inbound marketing standpoint, how will you go about it? What kind of question you should be asking? First thing you need to keep in mind as far as inbound marketing is concerned, it is user initiated. That's the primary difference between inbound marketing and outbound marketing. User initiates the action and organization is there to serve his or her needs. When person goes to Google, he searches for something, he is initiating the action and after that relevant content is displayed to him through SEO technique or SCM technique. User opts in for an email subscription. After that, user stays in touch with the organization through emails. User subscribes to your social media communities. He joins your LinkedIn group, Face group. Twitter group. So essentially the only thing which differentiate inbound marketing first and foremost is user initiating the action. Trigger point is users taking the first action and all our content be it relevant content will be personalized will be relevant to that user and there is a golden rule which you need to follow in inbound marketing is you are not selling the focus is not on selling while the focus is on helping people buy your product or services it is like an apple brand apple is a iconic brand what is apple philosophy they say we never sell our products we help consumers buy our product we make our products so beautiful so amazing that people automatically buy our product so in my marketing your content has to be so strong so compelling so interesting so relevant that your users are automatically attracted towards it so now we will look at case study of inbound marketing for a b2b it organization and following are the implementation steps we will look at. First step is identify buyer persona. Second step is identify possible content sources. Then you have to strategize the ongoing content development. Then you have to publish it and promote the content. And then you have to wait for customers to approach. And the last step is where you nurture your audience to generate qualified leads so that those qualified leads can be passed on to your sales guys so step number one identify buyer persona buyer persona is very important for any organization you need to identify who is your ideal representation of target audience in case of it organization leading IT organization they are targeting fortune 500 or global 2000 organizations which are based out of US and Europe because that's where majority of their revenue comes from and they are targeting roles including CTO, CIOs, Vice President IT, Procurement Head. So essentially that's the target audience IT organization go after now how do you go about building a buyer persona so essentially buyer persona is a representation of your ideal customer for that you need to know what is background of your customers what are their demographic attributes maybe their name age gender location if these are the relevant attributes in the scheme of your business what are their goals what are their pain points and we most of the time think that we know our target audience but you can have multiple 
buyer personas within your target audience please capture and document your buyer personas because your marketing your messaging all your marketing strategy will revolve around your buyer personas and one thing you need to keep in mind is buyer personas keep changing over a period of time they are not static i'll give a very simple example of horlix horlix was selling their product to everyone slowly they realized that pregnant ladies have a different nutritional needs so they came up with the horlix which is meant for pregnant ladies they also realized kids during their initial years they have a different nutritional need so they came up with a horlix for kids so that's why you need to keep a track of your buyer personas and how do you go about creating a buyer persona what are the things you should be doing it first and foremost you should undertake a research you should survey your customers you should talk to your sales guys and from there you will get very important insights as far as your buyers are concerned and you also look at your current customer database and then see who are your best customers what are the relevant attributes associated with those customers and then you will talk to your sales guys you also talk to your customers why they are buying your product and services what makes them buy your product or service in case of let's say airline organizations they also have different buyer personas they are targeting people let's say jet airways they are targeting people who want to fly from one location to another imagine if they do not have buyer personas they will be creating messaging which is very generic so we are flying these flight from this location to this location but now if they create buyer personas so their buyer personas would be business travelers the people who use their services for the business purpose they want early morning flight late night return flight comfortable seats while the other set of buyer personas which are tourist who want to explore new destinations and for tourist buyer persona jet airways will have different messaging we have new flights going to untapped location why don't you explore new destinations so buyer persona will be an input to all your marketing and strategy efforts once you have created the buyer persona second step is how to identify possible content sources now you need to create a content but before you go about creating content you need to keep a tab on your industry development your company role in it what are the leading trends implications possibilities that is where tips framework comes into picture tips framework refers to trends implication possibilities solution and services so being a marketer you need to know what is happening in your industry what are the key defining trends and what is the implication of those trends on your organization and if your organization is going through transformation what kind of possibilities it offers for your organization so you are basically doing a swot analysis strength weakness opportunity threats and in that scenario what kind of solution and services which can be offered this is where your content will be aligned in every company nowadays they are undergoing transformation because of digital marketing all transactions all buying and selling everything is getting digitized so you need to know how these trends will affect your company so once you know that then you will start creating a content so step number 3 talks about how to strategize ongoing content development efforts so here is a content development life cycle first step is where you create the content then you publish the content on multiple touch points once you have published it people will not come and consume the content you will have to promote the content across multiple channels 
once people start interacting with your content you need to monitor how your content is being received whether people are liking it whether people are sharing it and how much they are resonating with your content and the last step is analyze use those insights as a feedback to create next set of content so you'll be tracking engagement of your content with the audience and based upon that you will create a new content so as far as IT is concerned so we are we have taken example of IT organization so based upon the key market trends and your organization strength we have identified these are the key trends happening in IT industry so these are cloud computing process optimization lean IT big data so these are some of the key hot topics in my industry and please understand once you identify hot topics you should also check what is your organization capability on these topics you should not choose just because it's a hot topic everybody is talking about it and your organization doesn't have anything to offer so there has to be overlap the trend or the topic should be you know very much uh, demanded by the market but at the same time you should have capability also there so once you have identified that you start getting into different content types what kind of content types you can create you can create blogs landing pages articles quick demos on the topic so i'll be creating it for cloud computing let's say for the people who are coming on to my website first time who are initial set of people now the audience which is little more interested i will make e-booklets white papers videos for them and third set of audience who has already gone through awareness consideration preference stages now they have a need which they have recognized for them i will offer webinars podcast customer references case studies comparison sheets for them to make a informed buying decision content role is to help my audience to take a informed buying decision and that's what exactly i'm doing and last set of audience who are ready to buy my product or service for them i should have multiple other content types where they can come and request for proposal from my side where they can ask for face to face demo where they should be able to schedule a meeting with my sales guys so once you have created different content types aligned to your set of buyers in case of my it organization what i'm doing is i'm creating a e booklet on the topic of cloud computing now first thing is that how will you go about creating a e booklet for that you need to identify people identify key subject matter experts in your organization who will provide you the core content so look for people within your company who are expert in their domain they can be process people product people sales people or other leaders these people you need to identify them and you need to take your proposition to them that is the role of a marketing people marketing job is to package the thought leadership of an organization so once you go and talk to them you tell them okay what we need from you is core content after that you can after you have the core content you can be in touch with the content writers or you can work with external agency to massage the content to package the content and you as a marketing person will be creating a content pipeline content calendar which white paper i am going to publish on what date who will work me on that and what is the whole content pipeline when i am going to create it when i am going to publish it what are the different topics i have considered what are the category topics category themes you need to identify everything as a part of your content pipeline now since i have created now e booklet on cloud computing topic i will be now publishing it and promoting my e booklet that is step number 4 so i'll publish this e booklet on my website and my website is a centralized hub for all my communication needs 
so once i have published it i'll be promoting it because people are not going to come just because i have published my e-booklet i'll promote it through multiple channels i'll be using seo techniques so that anybody who is searching for cloud computing topic my e-booklet should be in the top google results i'll also be promoting my e-booklet through scm search engine marketing efforts i'll also send email to my email subscription database i'll also be promoting it through social media blogs and other means of communication now after that people are going to come and land on to my website for this white paper for this e-booklet now step number five is i will wait for the customers to approach me now my e-booklet is a very premium e-booklet so i will put it behind a registration page essentially i am using my content as a magnet and in exchange for my e-booklet i will ask users contact details i will be asking few details for them so i'll be asking them first name last name email id what's the company do they work for what's their job title if once i have collected all these details i am running my campaign i am collecting these details once people download my e-booklet i will be qualifying these contacts against my buyer persona definition so if student if any student or fresher he downloads my e-booklet obviously he doesn't fall into my buyer persona definition my buyer persona definition was fortune 500 companies global 2000 companies VP, CIO, CTOs of companies from US on Europe. So I'll be qualifying all these contacts against the buyer persona definition. Please understand I do not want to pursue relationship with those contacts who doesn't fall into my buyer persona definition because these people are not worth following. I want audience who have capability and interest to buy my product or service. Now once I have few qualified contacts, I have their email IDs. My job is now to nurture these contacts using email as a channel. So now there can other mediums of lead nurturing, but for this example, I'm using email. So I'll be educating them about my product or service because now I have their email ID. They have given me permission to send them email. So I'll be educating them what kind of capabilities my organization have in the domain of cloud computing. So I'll educate them. I'll send them another emails next week. I'll send them. Okay. This is the case studies. These are the videos we have. These are the success stories as far as cloud computing is concerned. I'll be informing them and also be engaging them through my blogs. So I'll be constantly be in touch with them. Ask them guys. Why don't you read our material? Why don't you come to our website, read our content, read our blogs? Since I am sending them email which are targeted, relevant, personalized and contextualized, I will also be tracking their behavior with my email. How many times they are opening my email, clicking on my email and how much time they are spending on my website as a result of my email campaign. Now. Once I know these particular folks are spending good amount of time with my email, they are reading it, which makes me believe that these contacts are interested to take the relationship further. With that in mind, what I'm going to do is I am going to take the engagement to a next level. I will now do a webinar for the engaged audience. So I can do a webinar event or round table to build the relationship further. So I'll promote the webinar with these folks and I will have a registration page for webinar. I will invite a speaker from my company who will talk about the webinar topic. The topic could be cloud computing and how cloud computing is changing the dynamics of the whole industry. And when I'm doing the webinar, I'll be creating multiple landing pages so that people can come register and uh, and before webinar happens, I'll be sending them multiple reminders for them to attend the webinar. Now, once webinar happens, webinar, I'll be generating few inquiries, few requests 
from contact details. I have seen webinars playing a very important role in B2B industries because webinar gives you a platform to have more focused conversation and post the webinar. I will generate few leads and which are qualified leads because these leads have shown interest. They falls into my buyer persona. I will now share these leads with my sales team. And this is where my handoff happens between marketing team and sales team. The point conclusion here is happier sales team. Marketing job is to build a brand at the same time generate qualified leads and their marketing job is also to facilitate the sales process. Now they its so sales team will be happy because marketing team has not just shared the contacts. Marketing team has now shared qualified leads which sales people will follow and close it because qualified leads they have better probability of conversion and marketing is able to now demonstrate direct impact on the leads on the revenue part. Now all the leads which get closed marketing can attribute the success of such customers to the marketing efforts and it also leads to alignment between sales and marketing team sales and marketing team in many organization they are not on the same page marketing team says we are doing lots of campaigns we are generating lots of leads while sales team doesn't have time to follow on those leads if you talk to sales guys they will say marketing team is sharing all the crappy leads the the kind of contacts which are not worth pursuing how do you bridge the gap you can only bridge the gap once you share qualified leads with your sales guys after marketing has nurtured that audience after you have generated the contacts after you have mapped them against buyer persona after you have nurtured them after you have taken a taken them to a place where now customers your prospective customers are now ready to talk to your sales guys now that's the ultimately end-to-end -end implementation case study talks about now i will be talking about how to go about assessing maturity of any organization as far as inbound marketing is concerned so here we are discussing few questions because unless you ask the right questions you are not going to get the right answers so these are these questions will help guide your thinking these questions will help guide your discovery process first question it talks about what are your key priorities for the year for any organization you need to know before you do marketing inbound marketing what are their key priorities is it new customer acquisition is it customer retention or mining reducing cost of marketing operations or entering new geographies or launching new products this is very important because your marketing need to be aligned to organization goals in case of telecom companies in india so telecom sector is a saturated market their job is to retain the customers and mine them in your industry what is your key priorities second question what is the mix of outbound and inbound marketing channels spent historically what has been the mix between these two channels question number three talks about what is the growth rate in terms of annual budget allocation between inbound and outbound channels so inbound even though in many organization it is still a very small percentage of the total marketing spend but the growth rate of inbound marketing is higher than the outbound channels Question number four talks about how important is inbound marketing to your overall marketing. Is it a critical component or is it not a critical component? Question number five talks about how long have you employed the inbound marketing channel as a part of your marketing mix. So this will tell you the maturity how long they have been using inbound marketing. Moving on to next question. What are the inbound marketing channels the organization is investing currently? 
SEO, SEM, social media, blogging, email opt-in, content marketing, building communities. Question number seven talks about how do you rate the company's success so far on a scale of one to ten? Question number eight talks about the company may have implemented inbound marketing in the past. Has it helped them to grow the revenues? What are the key examples? And then where has inbound marketing been the most effective in cutting down the cost? That's what marketing role is to generate more revenue, to cut down the cost of marketing operations and where inbound marketing has helped them. What are the three business objectives driving your marketing strategy? Reducing cost per lead, generating more qualified leads, growing more revenue through more traffic. Moving on to next slide. This slide talks about question number 11, 12, 13, 14 talks about the SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat. What is working well in your organization? What needs improvement? What are the opportunities you see to better leverage inbound marketing? What are the obstacles you see as far as inbound marketing channels is concerned? And then question number 15 talks about are inbound marketing functions centralized or decentralized? Because this is very important. Many organizations, they have different marketing departments aligned to different brands or the different units. But for a customer, for a user, he will be looking at organization at a single entity. So sometimes different departments are sending different emails, different communications, so that can cause a problem. So you need to know that whether it's a centralized operation or decentralized. Question number 16 talks about do they have clear buyer persona, the organization? Have they identified it? How often they refresh their buyer persona? Have they documented it somewhere? And does the organization also have clearly identified bloggers in company? Because if, if in you are in marketing and you have been given a mandate to run a blog for your organization, you need to identify people within your organization who can contribute as far as blogging is concerned. You need to identify them and you will need to orchestrate the whole blogging process. Because you not only are blogging, you are getting blogs from multiple channels. You are driving it, you are following it up with them. And then you are putting the whole blog plan together. So do you have bloggers in place? You need to know that. Question number 18 talks about, do you have content calendar in place and identified content writers and domain experts to help you write the content? For any marketing organization, content calendar is important. And you need to have identified the content writer and you need to constantly update your content calendar. Question number 19 talks about how many website visitors on an average you are getting on your website every month. And out of that, how many are signing up for email each month? So email could be one of your magnet engagement. That's where you are collecting their email IDs. How many people are signing up for your email? That's what you need to know. Question number 21 talks about do you analyze the success of your campaigns, inbound marketing campaign? If so, how often? Anything and everything I do in inbound marketing, I am going to analyze it, track it, measure it, and I will be using those analysis to feed my future campaigns. You need to know that. You Are you tracking them through web analytics, social analytics, email analytics, and other sorts of analytics? What is the current conversion rate on your website? If you are into B2B space and the ultimate objective of your website is to generate leads, what is the leads to visitors ratio? How many people are signing up for a lead? So they'll be saying, okay, I want to talk to your sales guys. I want to request for a face to face demonstration of your product. I want to request for your services. And question number 23 talks about, are you satisfied with your conversion rate? Yes or no? Is there any scope for improvement? Because no conversion rate, in fact, good or bad, wherever you are currently right now, there is always a scope of improvement. Question number 24 talks about what are the engagement magnets you are using to convert visitors into contacts or leads? And concept of engagement magnet is very interesting because this is where you are offering something of value to your audience for them to take a desired action. So it could be free consulting for one or two days. It could be free auditing, some e-booklet, white paper, webinars, discounts, so that people, when they're coming onto your website, they should be, they should do action 
which is important for your business.